In the shadow of a notorious lake, a mother and her young son's peaceful fishing trip takes a chilling turn when they encounter a stranger whose friendly facade hides a sinister agenda. As the tension mounts and escape becomes uncertain, they must summon their strength to confront the darkness that lurks in plain sight. Yesterday, I made the fateful decision to take my son on a fishing trip to a long-forgotten lake shrouded in ominous tales and whispered secrets. This desolate fishing spot had a reputation tainted by unsavory activities that clung to it like a sinister fog. Memories of a chilling incident from a year ago still haunted me, an unsettling encounter with a passing car that had yelled vile words while I was with my young son. Such dreadful occurrences were regrettably commonplace in this forsaken corner of the world where midnight trysts and illicit deals thrived. To ensure our safety, I had made a pact with my father. We would never linger past 4 p.m. in this eerie place without his presence. Yet, there he stood, my 12-year-old son, who appeared far younger than his years, and I, at our beloved fishing spot, a small pond nestled on the far side of the road, shielded from the lake's ominous gaze. As we cast our lines into the murky waters, a shadowy figure, an elderly man, approached us. He inquired about the fish population in the pond, and I, with a sense of unease, replied that our luck had yet to favor us today. We had once celebrated triumphs in this very spot, but today, a nameless dread lingered. The elderly stranger acknowledged our response with a nod and retreated to a secluded corner across the road. Time passed in a languid haze, punctuated only by the occasional rustle of leaves and the distant croak of a lonely frog. But the tranquility was a facade, soon shattered by the emergence of another figure, younger and more disheveled, accompanied by a mangy dog. Their murmured conversation reached my ears, but I was grateful it did not involve us. Our sole desire was to savor a day of fishing amid the eerie quiet. However, as the sun dipped lower in the sky and the pond's water grew more stagnant, I decided it was time to seek our fortunes elsewhere. We began packing our gear into the car's trunk, and it was then that the younger men called out, apologizing if his presence had driven us away. I dismissed his concern, assuring him that we were merely relocating to improve our chances. He continued to engage us, remarking on the unusual sight of a mother fishing with her child. A feeling of deja vu washed over me as I indulged in a brief conversation. But as I edged towards the car's driver's side, ready to depart, the man's tone took a disconcerting turn. He asked me to guess his age, a strange request that sent shivers down my spine. Unable to escape his unsettling presence, I ventured a guess, suggesting he looked around 25. His revelation sent an inexplicable chill through me, he was 38. I chuckled it off, blaming it on the frequent overestimation of age by teenagers I encountered in my line of work. He probed further, inquiring about my workplace, and my naivete led me to reveal the name of my city. He lived in the same city, he revealed, and launched into a bizarre tale of securing a free apartment due to complications with his baby mama. It was an unsettling brag, but I brushed it off, not fully grasping the implications. By this point, I was standing by the car door, my son already in the back seat. The conversation spiraled into uncomfortable territory as the man shared derogatory views about women, particularly his baby mama, and women in general. He espoused disturbing beliefs, suggesting women should be submissive and voiceless. My unease deepened as his earlier friendliness unraveled, but politeness and discomfort held me hostage. I made feeble attempts to assert my independence and challenge his odious views, but he persisted with his misogynistic diatribe. The situation took a sinister turn when he expressed disbelief at what he deemed unwomanly behavior. I replied with a single word, strong. It was then that the elderly gentleman, who had been observing the encounter from a distance, erupted in support of my response. The diversion allowed me to rush into the car and lock the doors. 
Panic coursed through me as I turned the key in the ignition, but my car refused to cooperate. Desperation mounted as I repeatedly attempted to start the engine, all while acutely aware of the man approaching my vehicle. Just as he loomed ominously close, the engine roared to life, and I sped away from that nightmarish scene. It was only then that I allowed my composure to crumble, initiating a somber conversation with my son about the harrowing ordeal we had narrowly escaped.